today we're going to be going from the phonograph right up to today's iPods and file sharing, looking at the changes in technology and the impact they had on society. With modern society rapidly advancing, we're going to take a look at how we got here. What made it possible to use the technology for music that we have today? Let's start with the phonograph. In the decade 1910 to 20, the phonograph became a truly mass medium for popular music and recordings of large scale orchestral works and other classical instrumental music. In the mid 1920s, radio, which provided free music, developed. And this new factor, plus the worldwide economic depression of the 1930s, threw the phonograph industry into serious decline. During the 1930s, as the American companies relied mainly on dance records and jukeboxes to satisfy a dwindled market, Europe supplied the slow but steady trickle of classical recordings. Well, nobody knows just how it started. Somebody blew it on a horn. Somebody played it on a fiddle. Somebody sang it on a song. Up next, we have the jukebox. Jukeboxes also had an influence on radio airplay. This is when you could hear a new song on a jukebox and then go over to a radio to find out if there was any new songs to add to your jukebox. And so you were encouraged to listen to more radio and they could use more use of the airtime. It was also one of the highest forms of morale boosting during World War II, mainly when the troops were serving r and this is so when they came back from the conflict and the violence and the dismal area, they could just relax and have a really happy time just dancing the night away with a pretty lady on their arm. Just trying to forget, just even for a night, what was going on, where they'd come from or where they were about to go. It was just there. Jukeboxes were mainly created for one purpose, and that was to provide better quality music, not only in public buildings, but some more wealthy off homes too. It did, however, affect society quite dramatically without even trying. Some of these influences were race relations. They joined black and white people together using the art of music. The record player. The modern record player can trace their roots back all the way to the phonograph, invented by Thomas Edison in 1877. The same as most pieces of technology that have been around since the 19th century, we're already fairly sure on how they work. Put albums on them, the record player uses the needle to pick up sound vibrations, and then it plays back the recorded music. It's simple, right? Well, over time, the design of the gramophone and the recording process, both of which were the predecessors of the record player, were continuously changing, yet the core element of the needle and the groove remained the same. By the mid 20th century, most households had what was then commonly known as a record player. More recently, it's been called a turntable. Its massive popularity lasted until the mid 1980s when the cassette tape recordings overtook records. For almost a century, though, the record player was the most common way to listen to the different forms of recorded media for example, music, speeches, languages, even lessons. The actual design has been refined over the years, but the concept changed little and the basic parts have remained the same. Initially, recorded sounds were mainly monophonic, which in easier terms mean that the sound signals are combined and come through one speaker or channel. The introduction of the stereophonic sound systems in 1958, the recording of two different sound waves, allowed for a richer, more lifelike sound. When played, the vibrations travel simultaneously along two different channels and are converted and dispersed through two different speakers. The record players became more common as recorded music grew in popularity, but not everybody jumped on the bang wagon. The invention of the record player is considered by many to be one of the most significant influences on music and culture. However, John Philip Sousa, one of America's most recognized band leaders, wrote in 1906 that a live performance was unique and that recordings cheapened the experience. Access to recorded music, however, resulted in greater exposure to the wider variety of music for all types of people. Local self-promoting musicians who made a recording could share their music worldwide. Additionally, recorded music helped begin to bridge the racial divide between whites and blacks in the United States. The Walkman 
The Walkman came around 35 years ago and changed the way people listen to music. 50,000 Walkmans were sold within the first two months of its release. Surprisingly, Sony wasn't the first company to sell a form of portable audio. The Regency T1 was the first ever portable transistor radio, which debuted in 1954. Sony was, however, the first company to release a commercially available compact disc player. It started off being just released in Japan for 168,000 yen, which is around £1,000 or €1,200 in today's money. It was released worldwide in March 1983. The Walkman usually has a slide-out tray due to its simplicity and reliability of the mechanism. However, some CD players have doors that open vertically, as you can see with mine. Car manufacturers caught onto the CD player pretty quickly, leading Mercedes-Benz to offer a built-in CD player as a factory option. In order for all CDs to be played, manufacturers came up with the Red Book, a series of standards which ensured that every CD could play in every CD player. Every CD player around today still uses the same technology developed in the 1970s. They play from the outside in, unlike vinyl. The rotational speed ranges from 200 RPM on the outside of the disc to 500 RPM on the inside. Also, the skip button was something that changed the way people listen to music. Now people didn't have to physically lift a needle or fast forward a tape to get to the song that they wanted. And whilst I mention the cassette, I should probably tell you that the CD player pretty much killed off the cassette player within five Last years. Last but not least, we have iPods and file sharing. On October 23rd, 2001, Apple Computers publicly announced their portable music digital player, the iPod. The iPod was announced several months after the release of iTunes, a program that converted audio CDs into compressed digital audio files and could organise your digital music collection. Within eight months, Tony Fidel, one of the main creators of the iPod, his team and portal player completed a prototype of the iPod and Apple polished the user interface, adding the famous scroll wheel. The iPod has changed a lot since its release and has modernised throughout the decade, leading us to new forms such as the iPod Shuffle and the iPod Touch. iPods vary in prices depending on the type, its age and its storage space. The latest iPod Touch can cost you up to £330 if you're wanting 64GB of memory, which by the way is around 16,000 songs. File sharing started in the very late 1990s. An 18-year-old student at Boston's Northeastern University launched a file sharing service branding it with his childhood nickname, Napster. The service almost immediately caught the attention of the Recording Industry Association of America. In 2001, however, Napster did shut down, declaring bankruptcy. File sharing can be seen as an advantage to both artist and listener. New singers trying to find a break nowadays frequently turn to file sharing, being it on YouTube as a video or a soundtrack on SoundCloud. It gives them a chance to share their creations with the online world, hearing other people's opinions and getting known. For the listener, it's a chance to listen to new and upcoming artists without having to pay anyone. Some of the more unusual songs like What Does The Fox Say? Gangnam Style and everybody's favourite Friday got into the charts due to their online frenzy. Along with file sharing came downloading. Many of us do it using programs such as YouTube Converter in order to get free songs whether they are official or not. This is, however, illegal, meaning that at least half of us should be in jail by now. Whoops. See you.